This is What Your Palette, where we just talk about what we just talked about. We actually ended up going really deep into deep. Um, nostalgia and 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 resurrecting brands. And we even talk about Red Chardonnay. I mean, Red we're, Chardonnay. Yeah, we were coming up yeah. with some like crazy ideas too. And then we got to finish with horrible bosses. We done. And it's we been got a while. to get in some morals, values, and ideologies in there too. So <laughs> Joe uh, got deep. So I he did, got I, deep. I, Please I stay my, tuned I to the held... end. He got really deep. No, nope, you're gonna. Enjoy I could have gone ten times. Deeper. Oh, you, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> Here's one thing that I read, that, but this is still. This is what you read that they're gonna add. to This it. is a rumor because you okay. know you got radio. For people don't know that this is Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto, six. number this six, the new one, the long-awaited <laughs> the, the, sequel to the, the game. All the parents wanted their kids playing. Exactly. I yeah. mean, don't you? It's for all ages. You got to teach them about the real world, man. <laughs> That's the real world. <laughs> <laughs> get get out of your car. <laughs> get a prostitute. Buy some drugs. Fucking make a drug deal. It, it, like, is, it is a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility in the real world. So here's what they're doing on their radio station. There, so the the rumor is that Joe Rogan's podcast is going to be one of the stations. No way! I thought it was fucking cool. Whoa, that is cool. Like, did you get like? Because I mean, for him to be able to, if he gets in on that, like, I wonder if that's like an endorsement deal or he gets paid for airtime or Dude. whatever. But like that is, I thought it was such a cool move. And you know, I I have no doubt that if that happens, that he would be like even like probably some secret character. Even that you could probably get like the skin. Yeah, you could probably get the skin for. Yeah. Yeah. I could see them doing that. Running around stealing cars as Joe Rogan while you listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah. I mean that's wow. Oregon. And th so we got to go and pitch. Go with your palate to GTA. Let's okay. Let's do it. I mean, like some people too... might want to run around when yeah. they're stealing shit, <laughs> listening to information about wine. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I could see it about the history of you know rosé yeah. or you know about quilt or like sitting there shooting up a wanna... gas station like pop, pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i didn't know that's how rosé was made <laughs> 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 that's funny okay i like it um i like right. it so today uh we got a couple well i guess we should do the introductions first so yes. i'm joe wagner and i got chris fat mario rubio yo on another episode of go with your palate where we talk about wine entrepreneurship and whatever the fuck else whatever the fuck else it generally tends to be a little more of a whatever the fuck else but uh we inject yeah. some wine into <laughs> the fuckery yes yeah all right so so, so, so stay tuned so uh, you know one thing that we were talking about was um the resurrection of brands or like or the recreation uh, of brands right yeah because because there's a nostalgic component to our society so so much so we like we remember something like from our childhood or our teenage years, and you're like, oh yeah, that was that was awesome. Like, and then and then you forget about it for like twenty years, and then something comes out that like jogs your memory about it. Like, God, man, I really miss I really miss that product. Yeah, and so people are starting to bring those products back. We see it all the time. Um, but you were going to talk about some because I don't drink soda because I'm an <laughs> I'm a grown up. I'm an adult. Okay. So I want you, you're such a dick. No, dude. it's like I, I just I'm, I'm just you do up. you drink soda. What did, was it offensive that I didn't I, I pretty much you insinuated you, you drink soda? Did I offend you by insinuating that you're still a child at heart? No, because okay. there's a lot of then people that enjoy like a, soda. Then don't act like a victim because the, the last thing no I, no uh, did I uh, hate no victims? no no you know what the problem is is because you're lying. Cause no, you drink soda. When do I drink soda? You drink you drink uh, adult soda, high noons. Adult soda, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. That's not an adult soda. That's an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you're really grasping at straws on this one. All right, so why don't you toss you don't, in? You don't drink root beer. I, dude, I haven't had a root beer in forever. Um, I'll have a sprite every now and or a ginger ale. I like ginger ale. Yeah, you do. You so say you ginger drink ginger beer. Ale. Ginger beer. Ginger beer. Yeah. And you and you do you will have a sprite every now and then. Every now and then, I'm a f yeah, yeah. You drink soda. Okay, yeah, like it's not a daily. <laughs> it's not a part of my daily life. Moving on. Like I was cooking a steak last night. I'm like, you know what would pair well with this is a Coca Cola. <laughs> no, we're not, not pairing shit, dude. Okay, I'm just saying. Just get just by, all right. Try to get my caffeine somehow. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, there are a couple comebacks coming, right? Mm -hmm. Brands. What were the brands? Slice. Slice is making a comeback. I never drank Slice. That was like the cheap version of Sprite and 7-Up, right? 
or was it the cheap version of Seven Up before Sprite came out? You know, I, what what came first, chicken or the egg? What came first, Sprite or Slice? I I think I would guess Sprite, but I do know that the interesting thing about the Slice comeback is that so Slice went uh, claimed bankruptcy, and that was like. Uh, I think it was like in the later 2000s. I don't know. Art. <laughs> Art. Uh, Art, you but, can look it up. When did Slice but, file for bankruptcy? But uh, they, and then this was interesting too because I'm also thinking about, and, and the talk of comebacks is that then someone brought the trademark and then they're bringing it back. And they're yeah. kind of doing this whole like, you know, retro vibe like Kansas, stuff like that. And I always thought that was interesting too because is it going to be the same? The same formulation? I doubt formulation, it. Formulation, because like sometimes when you buy that stuff, right, you're just buying the name. But Slice had different uh, flavors, right? Yeah. I think it it, was, it I wasn't know. just like a, I think it started off as a knockoff of like 7-Up, but like it, then it then it kind of got into the crush uh, realm, right? Where it was doing different like flavors, like strawberry slice, or no? No, they were doing, yeah, they, yeah. they have other, yeah, they have other flavors like that, but. Okay. Yeah, so you got Slice, um, one that comes up for me is like Pabst Blue Ribbon. Okay, so that's the goat of all comebacks, I think. That is, and and like you do right? case studies on it, try to figure out how they did that. But what what it was was, part, like part of it was nostalgia, right? People knew the yeah. brand. What happened to the brand, which is at one time a very like solid, well liked or loved American beer, right? Pabst Blue Ribbon, tons of history. Somebody bought it. This is what these big companies do, right? These big conglomerates. They buy the company and then they just start pinching pennies, squeezing copper, right? Right? They're like yeah. just taking out all the costs and then the quality goes down and all of a sudden you lose your consumer base and then you've made a bunch of money. Let's say they bought it for $100 million and then over the period of 10 years when they were running it into the ground and making as much money, say they made tenfold that, right? Just off revenue. And then they have nothing left but the trademark. So you're intellectual property yeah and maybe a recipe but i'm sure the recipe was already like you know they're probably throwing rice and shit in it instead of like actual you know wheat um so so then uh they just sell uh, like sell off the remnants of the brand right so it's like okay well we made we made a billion dollars off this off of our initial hundred million dollar investment and now we're going to sell it for just the brand for 10 million get it off our books yeah so somebody else buys it and then there's i, I don't know if there's like an intentional waiting period but somebody got a hold of it again. I don't know how many hand, uh, hands it you know, went through. Uh, somebody got a hold of it again and brought it back to its former glory, like brought it back as this historical lager, you know, great beer. And, and I think a mix of nostalgia and then marketing it to the, you know, younger 20s as like the new cool thing that's back from the past. Yeah. And fucking crushed it. I, I heard from like a, a distribution angle that, the comeback was really, they really focused on on premise when they were trying to make their and they were making uh, b good relationships with all bartenders. Like yeah, that and, was like what they attacked. And, and big keg business. Yeah, right. Because that's where and that's where so you that get that would exposure start seeing again and, and everything yeah. like that. Which is is um, it I think that was a good move. Well, it, it was... became the hipster bar beer. Yeah, <laughs> right. It, yeah. it totally did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you had all these mid twenty year olds being like, "Oh yeah, like I'll the old, a, yeah, like I'm not going to do mainstream like Budweiser or Coors. <laughs> like I'm going to like something a little edgier that's got yeah. history to it. It's got more of a story that like you know the ramparts of it were you know in existence, but now it's making you know a resurrection, you know whatever from the fiery pits of hell. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> so that, I think everybody got behind it. Because what do you do when you're a hipster? You go to the things that are not cool, you make them cool, and then you you get away from the things that are cool. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, and I think they were yeah. also pushing like a like a lot of the um, deals, like um, because wait, wasn't it just like I mean, it was more just recently where they kind of really started cracking down on this whole like two for one, all this kind of mark like marketing when you're trying to get because I knew a lot of places you could get. I remember especially in LA or a lot of the cities and stuff, it was it was like, you know, get a shot in a PAPS. Like PAPS in a shot or, you know, oh, just they could, two yeah. for one deals. I don't yeah. know. They they were always kind of like into pushing that kind of angle. They got a whiskey? Dude, PAPS dang. PAPS blue ribbon whiskey, all right. I just brought up the just whiskey. We're straight just, up we're white lightning right there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's like it look, <laughs> Huh. It looks rad. Uh but and also so a more recent one though too, uh, this year is Zima. Dude, okay. That was that's a malt so, malt beverage. Yes, with like a white cloudiness. 
it, it was well, like it's clear. It was like the epitome like of the late eighties, right? Uh, it's nineties. It was nineties. Yeah, and it was clear. Yes. Okay, I thought it was like opaque. Well, because there was this whole push, I think, like for the clear, this clear shit in the nineties. Because then you also had Pepsi Clear. Yeah. And so, and that's another one that's making a comeback. And so, like, this is just all like nostalgic. But Zima, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, there, have, there's uh, Pepsi. So yeah, Pepsi Clear. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can get away so with it. So ninety, them. yeah. So early nineties, but like, so that they only survived till like ninety four. What the clear stuff? Yeah, the Pepsi Clear. Like I remember when it came out. Like it wasn't. I, I don't know why like people would want it to be. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you, they're adding color to a soda, right? Yeah. No matter what. Yes. So I guess if you want to drink more of a pure, yeah, load of chemicals, uh, then drink Pepsi Clear. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, there wasn't really. There you go. There's Zima. So it was. It's more of like the alternate the idea. The alternative beer that doesn't <laughs> have color. And I mean, I, I, it was like a little sweet. If Refreshing. I remember. Refreshing. So it was a citrus beverage. I had to read like no because honestly, like I never uh, drank Zima. I mean, I think go. I had a Zima, but you know, it's part really of the clear it. craze of the '90s. Yeah, it seemed like it had a Clear really things. a really quick rise and then a really rapid fall. Yeah, like it was just I mean it was like what everybody on a boat would drink. And it like, was you in know, and out. yeah. So they're making a res- they're they're resurrecting that brand now. You said yeah. Do you know who it is? Is it AB and um? I, I want to see if it says actually here. Um, comes the, the the comeback is. It doesn't say. Wait, Jesus Christ! They're going through old shit on this. Do you just see that, Jenko jeans? Do you remember those? Yeah, that's what all the ravers wore. With like, oh, I, they I think cover those, your entire. Like, oh my foot. gosh, we can't even. Get, okay, so we're gonna do. I think we're gonna start having like this. Um, this is gonna start being like a segment. Okay, we're gonna say what nostalgic like, stuff. Yeah, don't call it a comeback. Don't call right? it a comeback. All right, LL Cool J, his favorite artist by Chad. <laughs> Chad in our <laughs> our control <laughs> room. Uh, yeah, but we're gonna be talking about these comebacks but today. Let's focus on drinks, but. It's just this is what it is, like you're saying. N- nostalgia sells. It all comes back. Like, okay, here's another. So, here's another. As a category, not just a brand. Yes. As a category, we as are betting category. on brandy. We are betting on brandy. Yeah. And so are a lot of other people. Okay. I mean, you got, you know, Gallo owns. Yeah. Gallo Brandy. They own Argonaut. They acquired uh, Germain Robon. So, like, they have the wow. all the tiers, right? Your everyday priced brandy. Your mid tier really focused in the on premise with uh, with Argonaut, and then you have the high tier of Germain Robon. So they're putting a big bet on it. We've been putting a big bet on it since like 2013. But as people develop their brown spirits palette, yeah, and they're like, okay, cool, I understand whiskeys. I get single malts, ryes, bourbon, what whatever, and they find what they like, and then they're going to move out of there. And that's where I think brandy's going to we're going to start seeing brandy. It's already on on a, a growth curve. Probably more like, but it's a, a tiny base brandy cocktails. Because I feel like that's what happened with uh, when you had Saw Bourbon really making a comeback. It, was, yeah. it, was, it started with like the cocktail drinks, the spirit, right? Old the, fashions. The spirit forward Dude. cocktails. Yeah. Rather than the, which we've talked about in the past, rather than this like two decade period of like vodka, 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 and it's like all mixer forward. It yeah. wasn't yeah. It wasn't spirit forward because vodka doesn't have any soul. So yeah. or character. So it's like it's whatever you put in. Now you can do. Are you saying this because you no, lost I just, the competition? Dude, it's just where... every time I hear, yes. every time I hear, <laughs> every time I hear vodka, I just think you could. It... <laughs> you know, it's like it's like thinking of like a really bad ex. But do you, like that feeling in your spine, you're just like, ugh. Like oh man. I felt like you just had like your three X's in front of you during that competition that tasted. You're like, it's it's. Poop, poop, and poop. <laughs> this one's really poopy. This one's this is baby poop. Yeah, this is dog poop. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so so I do think brandy as a category is making a comeback, and cool. it'll it'll happen small base right now. But so there was another drink that I just heard about that I've never had. It's called a uh, a uh, brandy Presbyterian. Mm. It's a long long name, so they they shortened it to like brandy the brandy press. But you can do it with bourbon too, or, or whiskey. Yeah. So um, I haven't tried it yet, but it is uh, traditionally brandy, plus equal parts uh, club soda, just sparkling water, okay, um, and uh, ginger ale, 
with a twist of lemon. Oh, all right. It's like really simple, but like sounds refreshing, not oh, overly yeah. sweet. So it's like, like yeah, that big name for like a simple drink. Shit. Like when they do that, like the well, I'm curious. Libre Libre, or which is like a fucking <laughs> cranberry and vodka, right? With the lime. No, Cuba. Gotta have the lime. No, Cuba Libre is a rum. No, and Coke. Oh, that's right, rum and coke. Rum and sure. coke with the lime. But, wait, but, what, uh, but with the lime. Yes, but what there's like the fancy name too for um fucking I can't believe I forgot it. I'm losing like my Cuba Libre. For... No, no, no. There's a fancy name for vodka, a cranberry. Cosmopolitan. No. I don't know. I don't drink vodka, That's, so uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that was a test. You passed. <laughs> I'll have a Cosmo. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I think I think uh, I think brandy is is a fun one. So like you know, we'll see where it goes. I I got a good feeling about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, what about um, because you you were also mentioning too, like which I felt was interesting is wine that you felt like that making a comeback. There's in the wine world. So in the wine world. If you look at a lot of the brands that were sold off to the larger companies, like the publicly traded companies, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, take like the Zen craze, right? Where you had like Ravenswood, um, and and uh, you know there were there are a number of big brands, but t- take Ravenswood, right? Yeah. So Raven Ravenswood during that Zen craze, um, it was massive. It was acquired, and then product was cheapened, and so on and so forth. Over the next decade or so, it just was kind of dead, right? That's just what they do. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can resurrect that brand anytime soon. Like if it if somebody just pulled it out of the market and they just shelved the 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 trademark yeah. and they're like maybe someday we'll have to get back into this. Um or we'll sell it off to somebody and then they just, you know, park it too. Uh but I think there needs to be a period of time for wine brands. So like the one brand that I see out there or that I don't see because it's not out there anymore, but used to be out there, used to be a massive part of California's wine history, Italian Swiss Colony is what it's called. Yeah. And they did a great job of marketing. They're doing TV commercials. They had this old guy who was a spokesperson and he always had his tagline and shit. And art, can you, do you think you can pull one of those up? No. Oh. So we're going to check out this let's commercial. Just hear it. Oh. Sometimes I almost wish Italian Swiss Colony hadn't brought out these two new California table wines. They're tearing my kitchen apart. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that was what it was. A, it was an Italian chef and like a German general manager. <laughs> like they're talking. Just so one dude uh, is like, Chianti. I think was just a fanciful name for that. It was just a red wine. It yeah. was a table wine. And then the Rheinskill or whatever the hell he called it. I've never even heard of that. So that was obviously a German rendition. And they're competing as to which one is lighter. I thought that was interesting. What would you like nowadays? What would you be if you were like someone's like, I want the lightest wine you got? Like that's saying, dude. I, I mean, that, that's that's all a preference. That's what that's what Psalms do a lot, right? <laughs> they just come out of the gate. They're like, <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, I wouldn't go with that. That's a that's a bit heavy. It's a bit much. It doesn't really tell the story of the terroir. I'd go with this obscure varietal from a place you've never heard of that uh, you know tastes like I like it and nobody else will, and I'm gonna upcharge for it. Yeah. That's that's pretty much in the back of a psalm's mind. That's what they're thinking. So, uh, but no, like lighter. So that was a sign of the times. I don't know if that was like '60s, maybe the late '50s, yeah. but that brand. If you look up the history of that brand, the old Asti Winery, which is, I mean, it's been redone. The old Asti Winery is um, out by like Healdsburg. Windsor, somewhere in that area, like Northern Sonoma. Yeah. And that is where the Italian Swiss colony was. That was a that was the most visited place in California for a good period of time. Over Disneyland. No joke. Like it was so it I mean that and what? that that is like before California had its wine renaissance. You're talking like the sixties. Okay. So people that are traveling, you know, back this is also when when road trips were a thing. Uh-huh. Right? Um biggest tourist attraction. Hmm. Well, it used to be California's biggest tourist attraction. Yeah. Um, That's yeah, but wild, like, though. dude, Over look Disney. at these outfits. They were wearing <laughs> fucking later hosen. <laughs> like, can we do that in the winery? I need a legit pair of later hosen. Could you ever? You know, like, like, r- like they probably weigh like twenty pounds, just like leather. <laughs> you got like bells and shit on them. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like you just know when someone's coming, like a mile away. <laughs> like it's like all this jingling around. Like sounds like fucking Christmas, like through the warehouse. Pull out one of those like, big like fucking... alpine horns that they use <laughs> in the Ricola. Like th- those are on like the forklifts. Yeah. <laughs> so That's... instead of like you know the beep 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 beep, you're just like Ooh. yeah, you know it's coming. That'd be cool. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I think that Italian Swiss Colony is, because it's been out of market for so long, and it's got so much history, yeah, and such a story, and so much shit you can find online like this. Like, dude, they already have, like, all of the marketing they need. It's like a boatload of nostalgia. Yeah. They could just come out with a whole, like, here's our Italian Swiss Colony, even if it's just, like, red table wine. I bet they'd crush it. Maybe you're, um... I think, I think that trademark is owned by Gallo. This trademark. I think Italian Swiss Colony. And it's, going on trademarks, so, I mean, because you have experience with this with, like, Mayomi, right? Yeah. Like, when, so, it's, it's right that when you do some, a purchase like that, and a company owns that, and they're going to come back with something, like, it's interesting to know that the consumer can be excited about seeing it, and it, and the actual visual, right? Yeah. Brings back the nostalgic feeling, but inside could be something totally different. Yeah. Of what they're consuming. Yeah. Right? And they don't have to specify that anywhere or anything. They could be like, we're coming back with, you know, um, this the uh, Italian colony. Swiss Italian colony. Swiss Italian colony. Sorry. Thank you. Swiss Italian because that's – Yeah. And it, – it, it was also I, – I do want to add this little bit of history in there. So during that time, there were a lot of Swiss Italian immigrants. Yeah. Like my nonni, my grandma. Yeah. 90 years old. And she was she was like part of that. Um, her family was was part of it. It was her parents that, that had moved over here. But um, if you go down to like Salinas Valley, Santa Lucia Highlands, yeah, where we grow grapes, and like a lot of the old farmers have either sold their farms or passed away, and it's changed hands or whatever else. When I first started going down there, it was almost all Swiss Italian, like to the point where they had like Swiss and Italian and American flags outside of like all their doors. And all of the the names uh, you got down there: Francioni, Pizzoni, <laughs> Panziera, Bazzetti, Fagiani. It's, uh, dude, all yeah, Fagiani. The, the, so these are all like Swiss Italian names. So it's more or less like Northern Italy, which they believe truly that they are superior than the Southern yeah. Italians, right? So when you say Swiss Italian, that means like no, we have more culture. We live in the you know more or less in the foothills or the Alps themselves, and. Um, and it is a different culture. It's like, I, I'd actually recommend anybody, yeah. like if you're going to Europe, you got to either go to Switzerland or Northern Italy. You know, that's a, that's my mom's side is Swiss Italian. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, they all got off the boat and then they, all of a sudden they're like, I don't, I don't speak a lot of English, but I know what Swiss Italian is and that's a wine made for me and my people. Yeah. So that like, <laughs> dude, they had built in, they had a built in market as soon as those boats showed up on the shore. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you would like to see? Make a comeback. Besides, like you mentioned brandy, which was great because that was a category. And I'll, I'll, I find that interesting too. I do want to like take note that I, I like that you can have foresight on that because I remember you telling me this even before they started popping up in downtown Napa. Just recently was like the brandy. So there's the California Brandy House. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's also Arbor Arboretum. It's like the Napa Valley Distillery place. Yeah, but it's a bar, and so but they do it. They do everything, so it's not just brandy, but like they do have a lot of. You're seeing more brandy cocktails. Come yeah, up. so um, and and yeah, so you're starting to see stuff like that now. I mean, I would say, from an entrepreneur standpoint, you have to look at two options. One is that you're going to create a product that's not been created yet, or yeah. you're going to differentiate so far from what is expected that you're going to create a new class, more or less, right? Yeah. So like a big boisterous Pinot to simplify it versus the Burgundian style Pinot that everybody was so acquainted with. Yeah. So you kind of, you break the glass ceiling of what is what is expected. The other route is looking at, at cycles. Everything cycles, right? So you're going to start seeing things come back. Brandy's been in the doghouse for like 40 years. It's an old yeah. people drink. Well, what happens when that like, that's been out of the market for so long, people are still producing it, learning new ways to market to younger generation. But then the younger generation has this sense of nostalgia of like, oh, my uh, my grandparents used to always end their day with an Italian highball. Like, you know, they do brandy and seven up or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, well, I'm gonna try to get back into that. You kind of feel cool, feel like you're sharing some of your history with your family. Yeah. So like, it's all cyclical. Now like, that one thing that came up, the Jinko jeans. Yeah. I hope those things never come back. Those are the <laughs> ugliest goddamn, dude. But I mark my words, give it 10 years, that shit's going to be back, and we're all going to be like, dude, this is horrible. This, I will say that I've seen the style come back. I haven't, I With the jeans the covering those, the whole the shoe? That, those huge, like, yeah. Yeah, dude. They are, dude. They're big right now. Like, Are they? But that style has been big like within um, in fashion like lately, though, too. Like, I mean, this oversized jeans, which... Yeah, I mean, I'm I, not, I wasn't into it. I'm not then, in. I, I'm not actually, into it now, but hey. 
so I tried to buy a pair for Rachel, not Jinkos, but the, like the styley looking, like the style, like like high, these, like, like high waisted. Sorry, if you could see, if you're not watching right now, we're kind of like checking out these jeans that look basically like two dresses sewn together. That's pretty much what they are. <laughs> oh my god! Check Holy out the leather Jesus. ones with the chains and the zippers on the bottom, so you can get some extra width. Just in case, yeah, they're, they're they're that's what you wear to an insane clown posse in case concert. In case you're doing some figure eights, <laughs> like up top and below, you're just like making sure. you How about got this enough dude dressed like business casual, taking you up in the black? Oh my business god, business casual with the <laughs> yeah. fucking huge flare jeans. Holy moly! All right, so so I bought them if for you Rachel. Jump off a bridge, you could probably <laughs> fucking land, dude. You could just like the Golden Gate or something. You'll survive. You know what? You should. You'll if, but dude, if you bought a pair. Nobody would ever give you hell for not doing leg day anymore. Have your you, little, have your you little, seen my quads? Your little twiggy legs. Have you seen my? Don't fuck. You, you chose Dude, the nobody wrong can even fucking see. day. Nobody day sixty two. You chose the wrong day, homie. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm about to show you my. I wish I could pull. No, my don't, I don't want to see up. any of your body parts. You are. You're, that's what you're trying to do. <laughs> that's what you're trying to do. Is you're trying to see. You're trying to get a little peek. I've seen you. All right. So okay, I bought a pair for but, Rachel, and she tried them on. And number one, I was disappointed because. I like to look at the female physique. I like to see the curves. I like to see the you know yeah. where things pop out and and go in and whatever you know. I mean, where things this pop point. out and go in. I mean, come on, dude, right, don't yeah. tell me, don't tell me that you <laughs> don't tell me that you're not going to look at a camel toe. If if this was his debut Are you? as a fashion designer, he'd be canceled <laughs> fucking immediately. He's like, I like to see the way the everything pops out and and pops in. Canceled. <laughs> Canceled. All right. Okay, go yeah. ahead. But yes. No, so, and what happened? So, you put them on? No, it's the same thing. She was like, yeah, these aren't like flattering. I was like, yeah, they're, I can't like, I mean, yeah, they, just, they you look like you're wearing a, a shitty denim dress, like or, like long skirt. So we returned them. That was it. Okay. Well, that great story. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I don't know why these are, I don't know why this I is. I don't know why you bought them in the first place. You knew you weren't going to like them. You know them. why it's a thing is because all the fashion models look like 10 year old boys. I'm not. Oh, uh, I'm no, not kidding. With like jeans? runway, runway models and shit. Oh yeah, dude. Like, if you have curves as a woman, like you're not gonna like it's not gonna be flattering on you. You yeah. got to be like rail thin, no like no waist or anything. You just like need to be this like you know more or less piece of you know two by four. Fat bottom girls make the rocking world. Dude, don't get me started. Don't get me <laughs> I didn't started. want to bring that back for you. No, I know. Okay, so I actually was listening to <laughs> that over the we'll weekend. Bring it back. Got canceled, still pissed off. I know, it got canceled. I, sorry, it was too soon. Um, so with Brandy coming back, you had the foresight on that. I don't know if, if there's any tips you can on, I guess on the entrepreneurship level to like have the foresight on if you're looking back on nostalgic stuff and you're like, what's coming back that I can kind of already hop on, you know, to do it. Like for example, if like, Jinko jeans were like if you had the foresight of those coming back and you could be going to thrift stores and getting some of those old those prized pieces put them on eBay vintage I don't know I saw some I saw some crazy stuff I mean I've seen a lot of people that kind of do that in the fashion world too well like they get the kind of foresight on it and then they they go and they hit up the thrift shops and get well, you, it. you see it went in vehicles too like you got you know the Broncos making a comeback um, yeah you, I mean so and that thing was like they didn't make a Bronco for a long time I mean, it's so like there you you'll, you see it in every segment of the world. It's just a matter of like, what is timing like? What is the demand like? Yeah, um, that kind of stuff. And so looking at more of like, obviously, entrepreneurs aren't just going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go resurrect this car brand. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to be a little more, you know, strategic and and hopefully it's something you love to do. And so you find something you're like, oh, I really liked. Uh, what were those? What were those wrestling uh, dolls? The the ones like there were stuffed dolls and the commercials were like just kids like oh yeah no 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 had, you, yeah. you get like Hulk Hogan I had Ultimate Warrior and Hogan yeah so those things wrestling buddies wrestling buddies is that wrestling what they're called buddies so they're, they're just pillows about. and you and your buddies could like tag them in <laughs> That's and, what they mean. and beat the shit out of each other <laughs> but they were just buddies they were just pillows yeah they're, they but they, they were, but they the were buddies, but they even right? yeah, wrestling but buddies they even sold a rink or like a, a ring right yeah. Yeah, so you could buy a ring and put it in your living room. Oh, we're gonna, yeah. Okay, so now think of now think of this. Now UFC. Yes. Right. So now you got like UFC buddies, and you got Conor McGregor, Holy shoot. Wow. and Poirier, and what like, and uh, I mean, kids are liking it. Maybe gonna, it's time to do a UFC wow, you just buddy. Did it, you said it. That's it. Yeah, you gonna you gonna talk to Dana about that? I'm not. <laughs> I would. 
hit him up. Hey, we could have him on the podcast after that great idea. Because I think that's – I think you could. Honestly, I think you could bring that back. Yeah. Grappling him and stuff, just choking him out, and then you could go to sleep together. <laughs> and so, and and so, what, do you, so what like, do you – like, You're like, good night. So like, what do you do <laughs> as – like now say you're a parent, right? Yes. And all of a sudden you see these come out, and you're like, oh, my God, those were the shit when I was a kid. You would do – yeah, you're right. And you're like – you're actually getting into the parents that yeah. are going to be making the purchase. Yeah, and they're and they're like, I want to give that experience that I loved to my kids. Smart. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. shit like that. Uh, anyways, that's your entrepreneurship um, advice for the day. Okay, that's what I was. <laughs> okay, I was just thinking like maybe you had like a brandy cocktail, like uh, I know actually a brandy. Co- you should you should try. Have you had a brandy Alexander? I have. Yeah. Do you like those? Those are good. Yeah. I like a brandy good. sidecar. Yes, was good. I, I was like thinking that like if there was some, I feel like the, with the cocktails, they, maybe they start happening in the cocktails first, and then there's like some kind of trend you can like pay attention to. But well, what's funny about brandy is like usually the trends start in the on the coastline of the U.S. Right? Yeah. So a little bit down in Texas, but like really up the west and east coast, and then it moves inland. Like the rosé trend was a, a good example, right? It took like three years for Rosé to catch traction in like Missouri after it was already hugely successful on the coast. Mm. Now, given the coastal vibe and lifestyle is a little more conducive to Rosé, but but still you see that like that kind of trend working throughout the U.S. Yeah. With Brandy, Brandy is, its strong suit is the Midwest. You go to the Midwest and by and large, if you're not in a major city, you order an old-fashioned, Yeah. you're going to get a Brandy old-fashioned. Whoa. Yeah. I like they, it's not yeah it's not even yeah. not even like whiskey's not even the first call. So so you know so now you think okay well they've been consumers of brandy for they never stopped. I'll say that, okay? And it's yeah. also cold as shit up there, right? So you want a hot toddy or whatever like I mean <laughs> in the winter <laughs> you're out there ice fishing. You're like yeah give me some warm brandy and some lemon. That sounds good. Um <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> hot toddies are good though, dude. I still that that's like on my bucket list. I want to go ice fishing it, with wait, a hot toddy. Is it okay? But did you grow up that did your? Because well, I mean, I think maybe it was, I'm, I'm going to see if it's a Swiss Italian thing. A uh, hot toddy? You know, no, but just I don't know if like this whole thing that alcohol cures shit. Because I grew up like oh yeah, my parents were like, dude, the hot toddy will cure colds and cure fevers or whatever. It soothes. It. I could tell you it soothes. Like well, your I know yeah. it doesn't actually <laughs> really cure it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Was, cure but it. I think this was that was the old time. <laughs> but there was the thing, the hot toddy, right? Soothe your cold and cough. Soothe it. But see, that's like now what you're word. seeing everywhere is everybody's talking about bourbon being the the main alcohol in a hot toddy. Yeah. What is the traditional recipe of a hot toddy? Uh oh, here we go. Because this is this is what I'm talking about. He's gonna. The whiskey, the brown spirit of whiskey, and I appreciate it. I love it. We make it. Yeah. I drink it. Whatever. But whiskey has hijacked all the brandy cocktails. So Ooh. when does brandy take back its rightful place? Interesting. What's it say? We're going to find out right now. What was the original spirit for hot toddies? Another show I, I of whiskey. I think they hijacked Google. Wait, hold on. A mixture of hot brandy. There you go. Right here. What's that from? What was the original hot toddy? An Irish doctor named Robert Bentley Todd was said to have prescribed his patients with a mixture of hot brandy, water, cinnamon, and sugar. More than likely, though, the real story is likely a combination of the two. Perhaps Dr. Todd learned of the taddy in India and used it to formulate his own. That's bullshit. I like the first excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how'd you? So you know that? Obviously, you know that because you're in the business. But like, that's I didn't know that. So you, you're right. This is like you just uncovered a fucking thing that like. It's not, nobody. Whiskey, nobody like whiskey is hijacking fucking whiskey is hi- Dude, I, I I bet like as soon as whiskey started its meteor meteoric rise, right? Yeah. I'm sure all the bartenders, mixologists out there were like, let's go back to all the brown spirits and replace whatever the brown spirit is, brandy, cognac, whatever. With which are the same thing, by the way, um, <laughs> with yeah. with whiskey. Oh wait, hold on a second. Hold on. But I think this is, I think it's great. Brandy and cognac. Brandy. So cognac and armagnac and like those are all those are just brandies, but they're from a certain region and they have to be produced exactly. under a certain uh, yeah yeah just like with like champagne certain framework. Stuff. Yeah, I think it's a, not everyone knows. You know, but dude, I gotta tell you, best uh, best brandies I've had are uh, both apple brandy, which would be comparable to Calvados. Okay. And yep. and brandy, which would mean grape based. When you just say brandy, it just is Gr- it implies it's just grape based, mm-hmm. right? Unless grape-based. you state apple brandy, cherry brandy, 
ap- apricot brandy, whatever that kind of stuff. Oh, so, okay. so brandy is is great base, and then you use the fruit for the rest of them. That's how the traditionalists talk about it, at least. I like this. So, um, so you got uh, you've got these more uh, traditional styles that come out of Europe, I think, but they're good, and there's some really good ones. Oftentimes, I think they're a little thin uh, because of some of the things they're able to do on the aging side. I don't want to get like I don't want to get into super specifics here, but there are different rules and regulations. We're able to make something with more viscosity, whereas they, I think, are a little more limited. Yeah. Now that's all through aging in barrel, and there. So we have to keep ours in barrel. So you're concentrating it. You're getting your your evaporative loss. You're getting more character, more filling, more mouthfeel, that sort of thing, and. You can buy a brandy, like I've got a brandy that I bought maybe five years ago that was over 100 years old, aged over 100 years. Funny thing was, it was only aged in barrel for about 15. Then they put it into a glass, what we call like a demijohn or like a, a just a big glass vessel uh-huh. and put a, a glass lid on it and wa- wax the top. And then it sits in the cellar for another however long you want. But it's not really like, they'll say it's kind of softening, whatever else, but you're kind of holding it in just a giant bottle okay. until you actually bottle it and now you're saying it's over 100 years of, of age. So I'm kind of like, yeah, that's that's not, like that isn't that straightforward to me. Like that's, I, I think that that's mm. a, a little shitty, personally. Yeah. So, because here in America, we have to store it in wooden casks. Yeah. And so if you're doing 30 years, you're going to end up with like, you might start with 50 gallons, you might end up with like 10 to 12 gallons. But that's going to be some of the richest shit you've ever had. So, because it's going to have that evaporative loss, you you can't get away from that without with using barrels. So you're saying though, but in a, in America that you it, to have to say that it's aged, you can't do that. You no, you cannot. You cannot keep it. It needs to be in a wood vessel. It needs to be in a wood vessel. Yep. To be considered for aging, you can keep smaller increments, but you can't like if you're actually doing any type of production, you can't. Yeah, yeah it's got to be in a wood vessel. Wow. Okay, um, good. There's, there, well, at least in California, there's like fire code issues and shit like that that yeah. they always point to, which, um, I mean, I guess I get whatever. Just more regulations, more ways of controlling the populace <laughs> by the government. Uh, okay, we're going <laughs> to so, drive it. We're going to turn. Digress. I'm going to grab the wheel. I'm going to grab the wheel right now, Joe, because this is important. Cause we're, gonna, we're actually just going to ride this one out because this is a great topic because I just realized what – with something, I need to know if there's drinks or something that you'd like to see make a comeback, okay? So I'm just gonna give you like, for example, for me, Jolt. I oh would, yeah. I loved Jolt. The original the energy original drink. The original Jolt, yes, yes. Yeah. I and mean, that was like I, I guess it, it w- the, the precursor to Red Bull actually was the first real energy drink. Jolt yeah. was, but in America, that was like, that was launched in Asia somewhere. Red and then Bull? it was rebranded. Yeah, there's like a whole, read the history on it. It's oh. actually like, I think it was like back in the 60s or something. And then it was rebranded for uh, uh, the American and European markets. Oh. Um, but nonetheless, Jolt was like, for all intents and purposes, our original energy yeah. drink. Yes. And I loved that soda. Yeah. It was it was so bad that my parents would be like- Oh, they're doing it. They are? Are they bringing it back? Are they bringing Jolt back? It looks like they're, tr- they're bringing it back as a- um... As an energy drink. bringing up right now. We're, we had to do a little investigation. Wait, wait, hold on. Did you see that? All the sugar, twice the caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tagline. Dude, what? That is such it's a great- Its slogan reads, all the sugar and twice the caffeine. Don't you love that marketing where they're just like, <laughs> we're just giving you- Yeah. The last thing that they're probably leaving out is just being like, and all the and all the coloring. We got yellow five. <laughs> we got red six. <laughs> we got- you're like you're you, guaranteed to shrink your sack. We're gonna make sure that those myths drink are one a day for two years Not if you busted. want diabetes. You won't be busting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Jolt, you'd want to see Jolt come back, or maybe it is already back. I didn't think it was back, but is it back? All right, all right. I don't if, you, know. if you find confirmation on that, I thought I I was thinking that, and real nostalgic was um, squeeze it. Squeeze it. Because that's another – dude, remember it was like the plastic bottle that was almost kind of shaped like it would be it only had, I would maybe like a like an old school like Coke bottle. Or but they're the, plastic. Or was it the one that looked and like it was – they had faces a, on them. They were like characters. Dude, I'm not remembering these. It's sugary. It was just pumped up sugary drink. 
and you sque- it was squeeze it like you just fucking <laughs> kids would just get that drink and you just fucking squeeze it. You wrap it. both hands yeah, around it, put it in your mouth, and just yeah. yeah okay. Well, you, you basically shotgun <laughs> like three squeezes. Well, it, during you know, lunchtime that explains a lot. Fucking pray for the teachers that got afternoon. Dude, it explains like, a whatever, lot like, about where our society is at today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we didn't know. I mean, shit. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I mean, just to say, like with sugar and stuff, the the amount of knowledge that we've learned about that, like, yeah, it was, it was in elementary school. I used to get migraines real quick, and the first prescription, the first medication that they put me on, they they put me on this medication. I didn't know what it was. Just a kid, didn't really ask. Just took the pills, and then I was getting into fucking trouble, like in class and stuff like that. The teacher was like just telling my mom. She was just like, he is just, he's just out of control. He's just like going nuts. Like what's going on? Is he on any new medication? Oh yeah, he's taking his medication. What is it? They, were, they had me on caffeine pills. Jesus Christ! For, really? For migraines? Yeah, dude, I was fucking lighting it up. <laughs> I couldn't even <laughs> keep my mouth shut for like anything, dude. Like they. <laughs> like, How long did that go on it's for? It's not time to talk. This was like second grade too. It was just like. Did you like go it, through a whole is, year? This is reading time, um, Chris Christopher. You can't. You can't be Chris. Sit down, Christopher. <laughs> Christopher, you can't go outside. Chris, you can't go outside. <laughs> You're walking around I'm like. like what? You're walking around like Beavis, like, like a menace to the classroom. I was just like, wake me up before you go, go. <laughs> Got me dangling. So speaking okay. of second grade, uh, my teacher was Miss Rigo. Oh, you, <laughs> dude, hold on. Jump into no, 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 no. Sorry, I no. took it. No, I no took sorry. It. <laughs> you know, hey, we'll cut this out if we need to, but I got it. I want to say it while. So, dude, I'm not kidding. I was looking on Realtor.com, and so she passed away a couple years ago. Okay. Very nice lady. She was super, super cool. I, I never, I didn't have her. You didn't have her. She, I, I heard good things. She was yeah, super she cool, was but she lived right at the backside of the school, right? Like next parcel over. Cute little cottage right in St. Lena. And um, and so I see that house comes up for sale. So I pull it up. Dude, it is a fucking time capsule. It is like, I I, I mean, if we can pull it up, Art, you got to <laughs> see the interior of this place, dude. This is fucking, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, you got to scroll over a couple, but okay. So, um, what's really cool about this? Oh, okay, slow down. So, you so this check up? it out. This is like. Can you? Okay, what are we looking keep, at again? Keep going. You just brought up. Fifteen hundred square feet, one point one million dollars, one bed, one bath, like total cottage in Santa. Like, this cute if your you're second a couple. Grade teachers but house. this is my second grade teacher's house, right? Okay. Hasn't changed a bit. Keep going, Art. Wait until you see the kitchen and the bathrooms. How did we, <laughs> dude? <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. No, I, I hope you can see this. If you're just listening, uh, we're checking out some real estate. Okay, keep Joe going. There thinking. we go, dude. Look at that. Yellow cabinets. Those are like straight out oh, of 1958. Wow. And even the chairs. A million. Go another one. So this house is a million hundred. And what, single- dude, somebody's going to tear this thing down. I would like, if I just had, you know, if I wanted Aww. to like park. Oh my God, that wallpaper? No shit. It's like these little like red, uh, blue, and yellow flowers. Like a... Those daisies? Keep going. There you gotta you gotta get to the bathrooms. Okay, there you go. Wow, nice there, a floral. Lot, a print. Lot of this floral. one, that's Whoa, the one. Oh dude. Dude, look at that's a pink vinyl seat on the toilet. Wow. I don't even know where you get that. That looks like Barbie's mansion now. That would go. I mean, that's a yeah. that would go right now. They should... You know there's some Instagram model that did some shit like that to her bathroom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh well, many of them. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um yeah, anyways. Oh, so <laughs> look at the Actually, I was going to say, look at this scary basement, but it doesn't really look that scary. It kind of looks like it could be a man man cave. Definite man cave. Oh, my gosh. It's wood. Just all Wall wood. to wall everywhere. Wall to wall it's even got some wood. windows There's, in there. Dude, and just like the leather couch. Yeah. And that looks like it's actually like three lazy boys just fucking stuck together just for complete comfort. Anyways, you so- get two bros on there. On your, You each have your side, and then you have like snacks in the middle, and you're watching the game. So Crossing on the other beers, side of beers. it, dude, okay, 1,500 square feet, one bedroom, one bath, $1.1 million. That's where our real estate market is at in San Helena. What's the square footage? 1,558. Oh, yeah. Shit. Dude, yeah. that's insane. And somebody's just going to tear that thing down and build like another cottage. <sighs> Anyways, I, I looked at it and was like, man, I'd really like to do this. But Why don't you get it? What the fuck am I going to do with it? <laughs> it's your second grade teacher, dude. Yes. <laughs> Why did you just- So I will tell you, it's really cool what uh, this happened like a year ago, shortly after she passed away. Her uh, family, because she, I don't think she had any kids. Her family was like cleaning out the house and everything. Yeah. And they found a cup, a mug, a Christmas mug that I'd given to her, still in the box with a note from me. So they brought me the mug and the note. 
and oh and they're like, oh, we gosh. saw we we found this in like Aunt Jean's or whatever, and you know whatever whatever uh, whatever they called her um, garage, and so we you know we knew it was used, so we thought we'd, and she even like put my full name on the bottom of the package and like the date that I gave it to her. I was like, that was really sweet. Yeah. Did you read the note, like what you wrote to her? It was just like simple, dude. I was how old are you in second grade? Like eight, seven, seven probably. Some are like seven. nine. <laughs> I think I was seven. <laughs> I think I was seven. So it's like, Merry Christmas, Miss Rigo, or whatever. I don't know. Uh, it, was just you wrote? it was something simple. Okay. I was just trying to kiss some ass, All right, man. did you draw a picture at least? Apparently she didn't eat did apples, just... so. Oh! <laughs> so I got her a mug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tried, really the, I tried the apple teach, or apple thing with teachers, and it never. You, you should buy the house. I think that's a sign. Dude, that's. I don't know. Sorry, no. Be... <laughs> no. Um, um, okay, what? Just okay. Just to circle back. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Let's go back. I, I let's go say, back. That was a really heartwarming story, though. I'm glad you shared it. Just to see like a softer side of you. <laughs> we see so much of the, Dude, the, the gonna... other side. I just want to know, dude. Can you just tell me? Is there some? Is there a drink that you would like to see make a comeback? Oh, a drink that I want to. Yeah, have just make a we're staying on that in that category of, of drinks. We've already talked about all the from sodas, alcohol drink. It could be anything. Something that's. There was one drink that was so sugared up, but I loved it as a kid, and I think I only found it in Texas. It was called Big Red. Big Red. Big in Red. Texas. It was, and it was Art. It was bright red. Like it probably turned your insides fucking neon red. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Big Red. Big Red. But Just like the got, gum. Big Red. So it probably had like that red six and red. Yeah. There, there you go. Big red, delicious, real sugar. Made, made with, with real sugar. sugar. That's probably why I liked it. It had real sugar and a lot of it. Is it uh, discontinued? So, looks like they're. Oh, now that Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah. they ruined we're like, it. <laughs> they were looking at it now. Now they got big red, was, <laughs> big, <laughs> big blue, pineapple, big peach, big blue. <laughs> I mean, big peach means something different now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they totally went with that. You know what they're yeah, doing? Yeah, you know that. why they like, did it. Like out of all the flavors, like they're like, we need the big peach. I'm surprised you didn't come. Wait, up with Wait, hold like on a, a second. Big eggplant. What? <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. I misread that. <laughs> That's big, the next yeah. flavor. <laughs> big sausage <laughs> and sausage flavored sodas. Look at that. They got it with all the meat and stuff. Yeah, so that was that was good. That was the only time I ever had that was in Texas. Well, so I had that... this. Okay, if it's still going, but I had this thing happen to me too, where I thought when I was like trying to look at stuff. There's drinks that I thought were discontinued, but then actually I did a little like finding. I'm like, oh, they're still around. Like, I, I didn't know like Four Loco. Yeah, they but they had to revamp that whole. They thing, had right? to revamp yeah. it though, right? They had to take it. It did yeah. take a little step back, and they had to come back out. Yeah, do a little remarketing, but um, but you know what we'll have to touch on when we get it some other time is like I I've been seeing um, and doing all this. I saw like High C. I think it was like oh high C yeah well high C came back with uh, alcoholic oh wow and I thought that so was... so now you got a lot of sugar and alcohol but I thought that was interesting to start as like a juice box company and kind of like we're just gonna jump into I would still love to see somebody do Make rose <laughs> rose in a Capri Sun bag that's you dude we're we're, we're waiting dude, for you to no, do it no I can't do that dude but like, imagine. You just it's so efficient, you just throw them all on an and, ice and chest. And you said that you were gonna be doing the Burgundian tall boys. We're waiting for all this, oh, dude. Oh, 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 that's right. Dude. Let's write it down. This are, are you okay? Because we we've already had this Shit. on. I almost yeah. forgot. Uh I need to make sure we still have that red Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is an example of doing dumb shit. This is not entrepreneurial. Oh, yeah. But somebody challenged us to make a red Chardonnay. And I was like, okay, so how do you do it? Well, you take the Chardonnay, you can de-stem it and put the must in a tank if you want with all the skins and everything whereas really in typical white production you would only take the juice and then you press some reds like say you're making rosé out of Pinot yeah. Noir or let's say rosé out of Syrah something big press those reds and then you take the solids of those of those reds yeah. after you pressed it out toss it in the tank with the Chardonnay because what you're fermenting is actually Chardonnay it qualifies as Chardonnay yeah. it doesn't qualify as the Syrah because it's only skins of Syrah there might be a percentage uptake on the remaining juice that's in those skins, but still. So you can make a red Chardonnay. So one of the sales uh, women were like, what if you made a red Chardonnay? I was like, if I make a red Chardonnay, I'm going to make you sell every goddamn drop of it. And I got to look back into that. Because, I mean, white Zinfandel, who would have ever thought that was a thing? Oh, People I know. think it's a different variety. It's the same grape, just, yeah. and that just was, pressed. And who killed it with that was Behringer. 
Behringer and Sutter Home. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, they crushed it. Yeah. So, but that's that's like the fun entrepreneurial stuff that like you get to just screw around with. And like, who knows? Maybe Red Chardonnay is going to be a thing. Well, or, I, I or, wouldn't, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how it tastes right now. That was over a year ago. A white white Zinfandel can make its comeback because I think what happened with that, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like they were killing it. But then it kind of just got known to be like cheap. It was the sweet, cheap, entry right? level wine. But couldn't you, someone like you, right? The majestic. You, I don't think it's no. It's not like ready. Do a, it's not ready yet. You're ready. That's like you're for the, ready. That's though. for like the Petersons. The guy that uh, he, Morgan Peterson. I think he owns Scott uh, Peterson. Bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> he owns, <laughs> He owns Bedrock, but he's he's also like the his dad was a, a big Zen producer, and he I think is doing like a higher end white Zen. And Larry Turley, Mister Zen himself. Oh, Larry Turley's doing a white Zen. Oh, okay. But like on it's a it's a high. I mean it's it's a high end. It's a high end, but it's oh, like so they're already doing it. Right it's here. pretty oh, juicy. Wait, the first red Chardonnay. Oh, we have it right here. What David is that? A, is that a G or a C? Oh, it's a G. Dude, Art, when David was this? Gluckman on how to he created the first red Chardonnay. Sorry, Joe. It's already been done. Oh, man. It was 2001. All right. He was way ahead of the curve. It's not going to go anywhere, as is obvious by the fact that we did not hear about this since 2001. It's been created. They did it under the BV label. That was a risk. Yeah. I bet you they did a shit ton of it and had to discount it all. Look at that. Woo. <laughs> Woo -wee. Woo -wee. Okay. How about this? Yeah, I'm talking I think, like I made like a hey. barrel. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be doing some more of this nostalgic stuff. We did kind of touch in some other um, other realms. I mean, we, you heard like the UFC pitch, which I thought was a really good pitch by Joe. But uh, send us in here. Let us know what what, uh, what categories, what other worlds you want us to talk about of this nostalgic because it's just gonna keep happening. It's happening in everything. Yeah, it'll it'll continue so, to happen because we're all. You know, we're we're all nostalgic, and the world and life is cyclical. So member, member berries. That's that's where you find opportunities. If you're trying to start something new or make success, like start looking there. Yeah, it's it's like you know, I think people just don't open their mind about things, and that's why they kind of like stagnate in you know whatever role they're doing, and they're not like I'm going to take a risk on this because I believe in it, and I think it's time that it comes back. I think it all goes back to something like Gary V, like going in and getting those um, old Hot Wheel cars. I mean, there's all kinds of collectibles. That's yeah, all nostalgia. That. That's like those things. There's there's a niche for it, a, yeah. a niche. We got a niche, niche for everything um, on that stuff. And it also just goes back to people going to thrift stores and even getting vintage shirts and then selling them for five hundred dollars or thousands of dollars yeah, on crazy. Beverly Hills. Um, that's we, LA for you. Do we want to hit horrible bosses? Yeah, let's let's do horrible we're bosses. We're going to. It's been a while. Okay, let's jump into it. Man, I didn't realize you're going to take so long on the uh, on on all the nostalgic stuff. I know. So that's we, why we, we need got other a whole stuff. Episode. We're going to have to hold the other stuff until the next episode. Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. horrible bosses. Remember, send us your horrible bosses stories at horrible dot bosses spelled the way you expect it to be spelled <laughs> <laughs> at coppercane dot com. Uh, we love to hear them. We like to critique them. We like to learn from them. So here we go. Buckle up, because this is a long one. Oof. But before I get to the nitty-gritty, let me set the stage. I'm in my mid-20s, freshly divorced, and in my first big girl job as a wine rep. Okay, so we're talking to a lady. <laughs> okay. I was fortunate enough to work with a great group of like-minded individuals, mm. all around the same age, and we quickly became a work family, spending a lot of time together during work and after hours alike. Since I was going through the previously mentioned divorce, I did what any type A would do to cope with their feelings. I worked my ass off and rose quickly to be recognized as one of the top performing sales reps in the region. Fast forward a year or so, and I was thrilled to be nominated for the company's future leadership program. Good for you. That sounds sounds like that divorce did well for you. <laughs> now, here's where things start. <laughs> Dude, seriously. It was probably a toxic that, relationship. Sometimes that happens. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. Around that time, one of the top sales execs started to date a much younger woman. Spoiler alert, it wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> who worked for the company in a uh, support role. Everyone was aware of their relationship as they were seen publicly together all over town. One fateful Thursday night, I was out with two of my coworkers, and we happened to run into the exec and his girlfriend. As responsible employees, we felt it uh, was our duty to say hello, and the next thing you know, we were all having drinks, laughing, and loving life. Have you ever heard the saying that nothing or nothing good happens after midnight? <laughs> <laughs> well, somewhere between tequila shots and the exec's girlfriend suddenly grabs me and starts kissing me mm. in front of him. 
for what mm. wow for what I can only imagine was foreplay or role play or some <laughs> sort of odd power play. I thought to myself in my drunken state, no harm, no foul, all in good fun. The next morning with bloodshot eyes and blurry memories, I drag my ass to the office where we have a full day of, of tasting wine. Okay. In the wine business. Uh, I'm questioning if this is somebody that works for us. Uh, <laughs> Don't. I see the exec in the hallway. We smile, wave, move on with our day, and I give no second thoughts to the prior night's events. The next week rolls around. I get a call into a, into a surprise meeting by my supervisor where I was formed that I, along with my two co-workers from that Thursday night outing, were removed from the future leadership program for being party girls. And just in case you were wondering, yes, that was the exact term used. Now, at this point, I could have, uh, I could leave you all hanging with your mouths gaping open and thinking to yourself, what the actual fuck? But I can't do uh, y'all dirty like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. For weeks, I brooded. Uh, the situation consumed me. I had never felt so slighted in my life. Did I party hard? Absolutely. <laughs> you are in your mid twenties. You're fresh off a divorce. You're showing like yeah. great, great promise and success. Like you got to celebrate. Yeah. I mean, maybe kissing the boss's girlfriend is. It sounds like she made the first move. I mean, not. I know. I know. The person that wrote this, but I know. But I mean, I yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, this was not something new. Uh, nor a secret. She's talking about her, like, did she go out and party? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This was not something new, nor a secret. I also worked even harder and handled my shit like a badass. I was reeling at the audacity of the double standard. This is very true. I have to I have to give her props on this. There were men who showed up to the Friday meetings week after week, still slurring and sweating out booze from the night before, but yet I remained, or but yet they remained untouched by scandal in, and in the leadership program. Some time passed... Uh, and I have a come to Jesus with myself. Was I really going to let this situation define my life and career? The answer was an astounding hell no. And I can assure you that my comeback was way greater than my se than that setback. Now, as I write this years later, I can honestly say without any doubt that I don't have a single regret about the course of events. I loved that time of my life. Uh, and as far as that sales exec who screwed me over, well, he and the girlfriend eventually broke up, but only after he footed the bill for a few European vacations. As it turns out, he actually saved me from a career path that truly wasn't right or the right fit for me. Believe it or not, we grabbed lunch uh, we grabbed lunch from time to time and laugh about the old times, and although he never outright apologized for letting pillow talk with his Jezebel influence my career, it was definitely implied. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to read that again. We grabbed lunch from time to time. And laugh about the old times, and although he never outright apologized for letting Pillow talk with his Jezebel influence my career, it was definitely implied. Okay. it's a good line. <laughs> Hands down, the most important lesson I learned from the whole ordeal is to never doubt how much the power of the P has over a man's decisions. Started the Trojan War and almost derailed my career, but I lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Okay, I I'm gonna I'm gonna attack this first from the double standard. I do agree. There's a double standard. I think that you, you like guys get away. I I actually say this quite often, like about certain people in our organization, and I'm not gonna mention any names because I never do. But um, you might hear some rumblings like, "Wow, she is so rude. She's a b i t c h whatever." Right? <laughs> You're like. If she had a penis and was saying the same shit to you, you'd be like, that's an assertive man right there. No, I'm serious, right? Yeah, I just, I just, you spelled out bitch. I, I know, I, <laughs> like, but I can't, I, I like how you, you have like these, it's just, it's, it's cute. Like you censor yourself at these certain times. Anyways, go ahead. Well, maybe it's because I was I was thinking of certain people and like I don't actually think that about them. But I, you know, okay, you're, you're yeah, you're being nice. Yeah. You're being nice. So, I, I... so yeah, so like, but that <laughs> is that not true or what? And so like, you're yeah. dealing with a double standard here. Like, she was in her twenties, got drunk, hooked up with a young girl that happened to be the boss's girlfriend. Like, I mean, that sounds like fun. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I mean, mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it floated your boat at the time, I mean, I get that that maybe you should have a little bit of a separation, but honestly. I would say that that would be on the boss's um, side of the ledger, yeah. right? To be like, all right, yeah, we'll have a drink with you, but then, like, if your girlfriend goes in to make out with this girl, I'd be like, whoa, 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 
Like you guys are working in this because they all work together, right? In some capacity, yeah. right? You, like you, you can't like you can't do that. I I would have like as the boss, I would have gone to the girlfriend and been like, hey, let's let's chill out. Like, sorry yes. about that. No awkwardness. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I'd put it on him, but then for him to kind of utilize that as, I mean, pulling her out of a program. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. I mean, I kind of look at like her personality. Sounds like she is type A and a go getter. And you don't want to derail that shit. You want to foster that kind of mentality. You want to foster like even the fact that like they're they're, you know, going out, having a good time, being social, being aggressive. Like that's all part of it. That's what we like to foster. I mean, we don't have like people making out in the company, but like we want people to work hard, play hard, right? We want we want them to follow their own uh personal guide, their their own whatever they've built as their guide in life. Yeah. And if they go too far, then they might get in trouble, they might get fired. But generally speaking, like you, you put somebody in a box and they're they're just gonna they're not gonna do well. They're not gonna perform, not gonna be happy with themselves. You gotta let people have their own free will. That's what I always talk about. So I would say they they should not have uh dissed her. Um but I think there there was there I think the boss could have handled that very very differently. But I do believe that there is still a double standard, not in our workplace, but coming from the top. I'll correct people when they're talking shit about somebody. I'm like, I want you, if they're talking shit about a girl, a female, in our workforce, and they explain to me what it is, and and I'm like, it, unless they're like outright, you know, super feminist, like you know, white men are the problem, whatever, like that kind of stuff. Like that's where it's like, okay, now we're going back to self victimization. Like, did I do it to you? Did anybody in the organization do it to you? No, then shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like. I, I'm sorry you feel that way, but it's like we live in a very different world in our organization, and we don't we don't foster that kind of stuff. So keep the the far side of it out of out of the nomenclature here in in the business. Um, on the other hand, if somebody said something, you know, somebody said, tells me something about a, a certain female in the organization, I'll, I'll, my usual response is, "Well, how would you feel if uh, if they had a penis? If that was a guy?" And it's just like you know it gets in the back of their minds, and like, yeah, that actually wouldn't have been that rude. That would that would have been like, I'd have been like, yeah, it's kind of like he's pretty pretty straightforward. But like, there is something about guys not mm-hmm. wanting to take directions from women. It's the ego, and it's a problem, and it always mm. will be. But men are wired a certain way, women are wired a certain way, and we're just gonna have to continue to strive for more balance. But I do foster independence and individuality. Wow. I don't like victims, though, unless you're truly a victim because you just downplay all the actual victims out there. Like, it's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm not even going to touch it. No, okay. I could go. I could go deep on this one. I, know. I think you went deep, bro. No, okay. I think you went. I think you went deep. Like that was deep. I'm like, about to get into a therapy like, session with no, you right no, now, no, no, and I'm probably just. No, I just, want this. I'm like, just talking to myself. Can we? Like, we're almost there. <laughs> we're almost. All right, all right. We're signing off. Like, all right, we're signing wait, off. Wait, hold on. Okay, well, last thing. You probably saw if you were watching. You probably saw like these three bottles here, and they're all set here, and they were here for a reason. But um, it's a little teaser because we're gonna get we're gonna get to them next episode. <laughs> That'll be our next episode. Yeah. All right. Signing off from Go with Your Palette, Chris and Joe. Thank you all for joining us again. Uh, keep on checking back for more uh, more stuff and let it, let us know what you guys want to hear about. Yeah. Let's all do right. it. We love to talk. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs>